welcome to 14th lecture of video course on travelogy. Today's uh, topic is hydrodynamic lubrication. It's one of very interesting topic for me. It does not give any wear, it separates two surface completely and it bears a load. It allows relative motion without much damage, obviously without this any damage. That is why this is an interesting topic and one of the very uh, favorite topic for me. This uh, aerodynamic lubrication is started with uh, Tower's experiment, we did a few experiments on a partial arc bearing. This uh, uh, setup is uh, shown or tower setup was shown uh, is shown in this figure. They say there is a bearing cap bush, then uh, rotating shaft or uh, rotor and there is a bath filled with the lub liquid lubricants. When uh, tower did experiment by loading this bearing bush and allowing shaft to rotate he found very low coefficient of friction. That is why I say that it was uh, difficult to measure the friction force that time, but lever arrangement and um, pin joint arrangement he did and uh, could uh, measure the friction. We cannot say it was a friction measurement was accurate, but whatever the data came they were very relevant and uh, more related to science. That is why we can say uh, Tower's observation he found very low coefficient of friction. I use a word uh, uh, use a symbol tilt which indicates a approximate value. It does not give accurate value, it was approximate value the coefficient of friction point not not one very low coefficient of friction always desirable by all researchers, all scientists, all engineers. In addition to those observation uh, Thomas uh, commented on a uh, sliding speed indicated that coefficient of friction or is the friction force increases with the sliding speed this is quite contradictory with uh, the time existing uh, friction loss. Take an example of coulomb it says a friction force does not depend on the relative velocity or sliding velocity, but our experiment proved that coefficient of friction or friction resistance increases with increase in the sliding speed. Another interesting uh, observation came from his uh, experiment was that friction resistance decreases with increase in a temperature that is one other important observation. Of course, uh, we cannot say these are the final findings whatever experiment uh, uh, were done by the tower were uh, very limited in within a range only. So, these observation remain in a range it does not mean it is always true because of friction really decreases sometime with a decrease increase in the velocity or uh, sliding velocity and coefficient of friction increases with the increase in the temperature also. So, that is why we are uh, uh, mentioning the word that this uh, observation were made by Tower's experiment or uh, were concluded from a Tower's experiment. Few more uh, uh, observations uh, from the Tower experiment is that are those uh, in the oil bath lubrication, he used the oil bath lubrication completely fill or uh, um, shaft was submerged in uh, lubricant. That is why he said that most of the question of friction experiment or uh, friction related experiment were uh, can be termed as a liquid uh, friction uh, force or uh, friction occurring because of the liquid. That is why that these were uh, observation not related to the Coulomb's uh, experiment or uh, Amenton uh, experiments is with a uh, based on the more on liquid. Another observation was that you could find really a floating of um, um, shaft um, in liquid without really in contact. So, that is a floating is possible or we say the levitation is possible when use a liquid lubricant. Another uh, important observation he found the fluid uh, pressure was a maximum at the middle and that was almost two times compared to mean pressure. It was an interesting observation that pressure does not remain uniform in uh, bearing it comes to the maximum value at the center and uh, it is a twice that uh, two times the mean value. 
that means, so what we do calculation in ordinary uh, mechanical engineering, we find that the average pressure whatever the load divide by area and then uh, calculate uh, uh, what will be mean pressure and choose a material accordingly. But uh, Tower's experiment clearly indicated max pressure will be more than uh, mean pressure, it is a, in his uh, view it was a 2 times. However, we have done number of experiment and we found that mean pressure uh, maximum pressure can go even the 10 times compared to mean pressure. Another interesting observation from uh, Tower's experiment can be concluded or can be uh, uh, noted is that the unstable uh, friction resistance. Whenever there is a starvation, where is a lesser lubricant, where is a more or like a condition happening as a mixed lubrication, friction force was instable. It, it was not uh, giving a constant same value again and again. You do a number of experiment and every time you find some difference in uh, experimental results. So, the results were not repeatable or uh, repetitive. In that case, uh, mean value on standard deviations was important or we can say the friction force in uh, um, mixed lubrication condition or starvation condition will be on uh, uh, statistical quantity, where will be we need to define a mean value as well as we need to define uh, standard deviation. However, for liquid lubricant he found uh, more or less steady coefficient of friction and uh, results were repeatable. So, that is the importance of uh, liquid lubrication, if it is a complete hydrodynamic lubrication, what the term can be given in this hydrodynamic lubrication, then um, coefficient of friction will remain steady, it can be repeatable and then we can calculate or uh, we can design accordingly. Now, another uh, uh, conclusion, uh, final conclusion which can say that uh, it comes from the tower experiment is uh, his results his experimentalists really motivated researcher to understand the physics of various parameter effect of the various parameter on a fluid flow pressure generation. Whether it is possible to generate a fluid flow first thing, second thing is what are the parameters which are affecting the this results. So, it motivated researchers to do number of experiment and uh, thinking from different angle, thinking from viscosity angle, thinking from uh, geometry point of view, thinking about the um, application of uh, lubricant uh, with from uh, different location and that is why the number of experiments uh, results experimental results are available and people generally quantify those with uh, some physics also. To understand what the tower did, we will take very simple example uh, what we say that um, simple geometry. Uh, you can see there uh, a dash or b a dash and b dash is a plate, it is moving with the velocity u a. Sometimes we call uh, is a, a prime and b prime instead of e dash, uh, a dash and a b dash. So, a prime and b prime is another plate uh, a b which is a constant, uh, it is a steady, it does not. Uh, uh, does not move, it is uh, more like a uh, rigidly fixed at the one place and this uh, plate is uh, sliding at the velocity u a. This coordinate system shows that uh, we are assuming uh, x direction from a to b or towards that side and z direction is a perpendicular to this screen and it can give a depth uh, arrangement while y is a film thickness y is um, or we say the film thickness is in direction of the y that is a coordinate. Generally this separation is smaller when we talk about hydrodynamic lubrication it may be turning out to be a 0.1 percent or lesser than that 0.1 percent of uh, oral dimension or radial dimension or sliding dimension or tangential dimension. So, that gap generally we keep very very low. So, if we want to find out uh, any pressure generation between the surfaces. Now, what is the observation from coming from um, uh, this slide or the, this arrangement, whatever the velocity at the entrance should remain the same velocity at the exit. If we neglect the coefficient of friction or if we neglect the friction, skin friction of the pipe or the skin friction of the plate, if we assume that there is no friction, it is negligible. So, whatever the um, energy at the given at the entrance should be the same at the exit and this is the velocity profile. So, whatever the kinetic energy of the entrance should be the same as the kinetic energy of the output or exit and there is no any other direction we are assuming that uh, there is no exit in z direction. If the exit is only in x direction entrance is only in x direction and further we are assuming that these plates are 
completely um, filled or does not have any porosity. So, liquid cannot enter in this plate or liquid cannot preserve this liquid at all. So, with this kind of arrangement, uh, this is a very simple I think uh, at the velocity at the entrance will be remaining the same velocity at the exit if you are assuming friction or pipe friction or plate friction is negligible and then we uh, do not find any pressure development which was uh, observed by the tower or uh, which was concluded from tower the pressure will be higher at the middle point and it will be 2 times compared to the mean pressure. However, if we see the slightly different arrangement, we say that now plate A B which was a stationary earlier yeah, is inclined at an angle alpha. This angle may be 0 0.5 degree, 1 degree, 1.5 degree very low value. Even in that case what will happen the film thickness will not remain constant. Film thickness or the separation between the two plate will not remain constant. It will turn out to be a function of axial direction or we say that um, um, film thickness continuously will vary in the axial direction or in x direction. Because of this arrangement what will happen say that area B B bar or is a B uh, B uh, dash or B prime will be lesser than uh, area of A A prime. When the area is decreasing if we assume the same kinetic energy or kinetic preservation of kinetic energy then velocity profile velocity should go higher side, but we know the um, uh, slip theory and you say that whatever the maximum velocity of the plate fluid velocity we cannot be more than that. The maximum velocity of the plate uh, whatever the plate comes fluid have will be having maximum velocity equal to the plate velocity it will not go beyond that velocity or in other word there will be not be any mass conservation maybe more liquid is coming in, but lesser liquid is going out and, and there is no possibility of a storage of this liquid and where this liquid goes naturally physics has to change now. Some additional aspect will come you see that there will be a pressure positive gradient to increase the mass flow positive pressure gradient at the exit and negative pressure gradient at the entrance. Initially when there was there were parallel plate no separation uh, variation in separation from thickness was the same velocity remained constant. However, when we are giving a convergence we are giving some taper we are giving some angle to the plate then what is happening there is a change in velocity profile also. At the velocity uh, uh, if I assume even the same suppose then the pressure is going to change our mass flow rate to be increased at the exit then uh, additional pressure gradient is coming there is a positive pressure gradient which is going to increase the mass flow while at the entrance pressure flow should uh, decrease to some extent and that is why uh, pressure gradient is uh, generated or a negative pressure gradient which is retarding the fluid flow. That is why the from conservation of mass if I use a theorem we find the pressure is uh, negatively generated here which is retarding the flow positively generated here which is pushing flow out or helping a mass flow rate. We can uh, think in this direction or if we try to sketch we can say the pressure is positive that is uh, the, at the exit where the B and uh, B dash or uh, B prime is here while uh, negative pressure at uh, entrance A and A prime. Now, if we superimpose mass flow rate what we get there is a velocity profile in addition to that pressure flow uh, the mass flow rate will happen because of the pressure. Similarly, there is a velocity profile will is the same, but now negative pressure uh, gradient is retarding the flow that means it is reducing the flow uh, mass flow rate. At the entrance the things are happening in both end at the entrance flow is retarded at the exit flow is pushed out is, uh, um, it is driven by the positive pressure gradient that means it was not only the velocity now the pressure is acting in this. If we try to plot it we know very well now two boundary condition will remain 
at the entrance pressure is almost uh, negligible or the gauge pressure whatever the pressure was, was given to it, um, um, to the surfaces while um, at the exit again if we assume the ambient pressure or gauge pr pressure is a 0 then we find the maximum pressure happening at the middle point. Pressure at the entrance is 0 the gauge pressure on the or the exit is again the gauge pressure the pressure is 0 and pressure maximum happening at the center and this is justifying this is justifying uh, tower's experiment that means what tower did whatever the experiment he performed because of the floating arrangement of the um, rotor or floating arrangement of the push dynamically position was changed and there was a some convergent um, uh, rejection was made or uh, some change in geometry which uh, reduce the uh, mass flow rate at the entrance and uh, push the mass flow rate at the exit was made. That is a hydrodynamic lubrication. What we can say that uh, in hydrodynamic lubrication we require liquid, we require relative motion. This liquid we are using the word uh, because of the hydrodynamic action and uh, it has been uh, known since more than uh, 125 years. However, um, if we uh, replace this uh, liquid with uh, air or some gas, uh, still this kind of action will happen. If there is a relative motion and there is a gas, then uh, still a similar mechanism will happen only the pressure generation will not be that high as in a case of the liquid. Reason being the viscosity of uh, gas is much much smaller than viscosity of the liquid maybe say almost 1000 lesser then pressure generation also will be lesser or another case in for light load application we can use aerodynamic lubrication where almost a load is negligible or almost the ambient um, pressure is generated. In that case we can use a gas lubrication or a gas as a lubricant while otherwise uh, wherever the moderate load comes we need to use a uh, liquid lubricant. These uh, are the two typical example whenever we start discussing about hydronomic lubrication these all are the exaggerated uh, it is not really in the dimension as I mentioned clearly uh, and that clearance between the two surfaces need to be very very small. If clearance or uh, separation between two uh, surfaces is not very small then the whatever the theory which uh, we know uh, to describe the lubri uh, hydronomic lubrication will not be remain valid or that validity of uh, this whole mechanism is that separation is very small and pressure gradient is not generated in that direction. So, this is uh, known as a thrust bearing or tilting uh, bearing you can see there is also wedge formation the film thickness is decreasing whatever we have discussed in uh, previous uh, slide that moving place was tilted. While in this case you can see the stationary plate is tilted, moving plate is uh, remaining uh, same angle. So, there is an inclination of course, is the only the relative angle which matters whichever plate is uh, tilted it does not matter too much to us it is the only the relative angle relative velocity which matters the hydrodynamic lubrication or uh, hydrodynamic lubrication is governed basically by uh, relative velocity and viscosity that can be stated in that the uh, two essential features for the hydrodynamic lubrications uh, liquid must be viscous. There is be a um, uh, liquid need to be a layered structure and um, connected to each other and then uh, we require some force to push this liquid out. That means, there is a need to have some viscous uh, nature and by and large almost every liquid has that kind of characters. So, another one uh, is that uh, there need uh, there is a need of convergent wedge. If the geometry is uh, given either it is um, the floating because of the floating arrangement geometry changes its own and then there is a some wedge action you can see there is a wedge action over here as uh, there is a more uh, if I assume this is a theta is equal to 0 we are taking polar coordinates that this is a maximum flum thickness position we are when theta is uh, reaching to pi or 180 degree thickness is minimum or uh, separation between two surfaces minimum that is called a minimum flum thickness location and path from uh, maximum uh, flum thickness to the minimum flum thickness is convergent you can see that slowly slowly it is getting convergent. However, interesting thing is that uh, when there is a convergent there is equivalent uh, divergent also in other sign the whatever the pressure is generated in this domain it should be lapsed back as it should um, um, 
go back to the negative direction and we should get overall a load carrying capacity equal to 0, but it does not happen really. In the case of the liquid what happens if the pressure is a lesser than ambient pressure the liquid gets separated it does not go below the 0 pressure or is uh, may be uh, lesser than vapor pressure what we call as a cavitation liquid uh, streamers form and there are always a some uh, gap uh, there is always some gap between the streamers. Now, that is uh, uh, why we overall get the positive results or uh, pressure load carrying capacity uh, uh, from the hydrodynamic uh, bearing arrangement or arrangement which is shown in this um, diagram. Similarly, uh, arrangement is shown here, here this is a tilting pad uh, bearing. The, if the sliding happens uh, because of the tilt angle pressure generation will be there. In, however, uh, we have observed that instead of a uh, maximum pressure at the middle point, pressure is always on a uh, higher on uh, uh, exit side towards the exit side always uh, it will be slightly shifted from the mean value uh, mean uh, line to exit side. Some characteristics can be described in uh, um, terms of as a characteristic parameter we say that uh, one of the interesting or observation from hydrodynamic lubrication is the coefficient of friction is very very low which is favorable we should stick to that. And uh, whatever the uh, friction loss happens it uh, they, uh, this kind of a friction happens because of the shearing of the liquid that means viscosity is required to uh, uh, carry the load, but viscosity is not required because um, it is going to uh, cause uh, more and more friction that is why we say that lower the viscosity of the oil lower the friction force because shearing of the uh, if the viscosity is low lesser there will be shearing and lesser will be friction. However, the problem comes if there is a liquid is not able to withstand the load it is simply squeezed out in uh, no time then uh, there will be metal to metal contact and hydrodynamic lubrication will not exist after that. So, to maintain hydrodynamic lubrication we need to have viscosity of the lubricant. That is why we require viscosity, but we do not require viscosity and that is why there is always a some trade off maximum viscosity and minimum viscosity and we need to choose a proper lubricant which gives a desirable results from a load point of view as well as a friction point of view. And of course, we want wear to be 0, we never uh, attempt to um, collide surface or contacting two surfaces. We do not want that uh, this film thickness turn out to be 0 at any point. That is why we say that in ideal case, I am using the word ideal case because uh, whatever we do is still there is a possibility of 1 percent or 2 percent metal contact, uh, maybe a transient condition, a start and stop condition, but in ideal case this should not be anywhere of the moving cards. If we are planning to go ahead with the hydronomic lubrication mechanism. As uh, more and more emphasis was given on viscosity, there is a point to um, give a few slides on the viscosity. We say that it is a physical property of the liquid, it is not a metal property, but we say that uh, is a physical property of the liquid which can be measured by finding their molecular attraction. They have some resistance against the flow and if we are able to observe that, that will give us a viscosity. We have a two units of the viscosity of commonly we use a two viscosity uh, terms with what we call as a dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity. In kinematic viscosity it, uh, it, um, we do experiment uh, with the influence of the gravity force and that is why the gravity does not come into picture over here. And uh, common unit to which we uh, use for the kinematic viscosity is a centistoke and uh, metric unit it can be expressed as a millimeter square per unit second. Well, and dynamic viscosity is generally expressed in a sandy poise and if we use a SI unit it will be a Pascal second or often it is expressed in a milli Pascal second. So, for most of the uh, our uh, theoretical calculation or uh, when we do computational work or when we do the modeling of uh, tribal surfaces, we may require dynamic viscosity. While when we do um, experiments, most often we use a measure the kinematic viscosity. 
except a few experimental setup where the rotational is uh, movement is used and uh, we do not use a uh, gravity force. To just to give a feel of the viscosity, uh, this diagram uh, shows uh, some uh, drops. You can see the first um, uh, figure or the, uh, the, the first part of the figure which shows that liquid is dripping and the liquid molecule or the drop size is very big compared to drop size of this. You can see the flow is uh, slightly lesser in this case flow is more, but we can find here the all the tilting angle is same tilting angle for the all arrangement is remain same. Here liquid is flowing with a more mass flow rate less fast mass flow rate almost negligible mass flow rate here it is taking time to flow and here almost stick. So, it is more like a gel character that is what the gel, gel will be having higher viscosity. However, some video to show what is uh, this viscosity flow. Let us play this. You can see uh, when we are switching off current, then liquid start flowing. When we switch on current, which is getting displayed in um, uh, this uh, power supply that is uh, supplying the current to the electromagnet over here, that generate magnetic field and causes a restriction of the flow. Or in other word, using this kind of arrangement, we are changing online viscosity, low viscosity to high viscosity just by changing or supplying some current to the arrangement. This kind of liquids are known as a magnetoreological liquid and uh, they are known uh, for change in viscosity or uh, their behavior is uh, known for the liquid to the solid to uh, is a liquid to semi solid to the solid. Their uh, strength or shear strength changes from a 0 Pascal uh, to uh, maybe say 100 uh, uh, kilo Pascal. The substantial change happens in uh, just fraction of second. That is why we say that viscosity plays important role and uh, this kind of uh, MR fluid they are changing the online viscosity whatever the viscosity we require it can be uh, made according to that. Yeah, typical this uh, table shows that some typical uh, viscosity um, uh, values which uh, have been utilized in a number of uh, arrangements. We can conclude from this arrangement is that if the load is increasing viscosity need to be increased. Take an example of instruments or the clock and we know very well a load is almost negligible on those arrangements, but take an example of the warm gear load is very high contact uh, will be very very uh, high or contact area need to be larger in this case because of the applied load is very high. So, you can see the viscosity change with the kinematic viscosity we are using 5 to 20 centi stroke in that here we are using 200 plus. So, increase in uh, load is increase uh, require the higher viscosity even though we can say that hypoid gear and uh, warm gear they do not work in hydrodynamic lubrication, they generally work in mixed lubrication, but major part of the major uh, part of the uh, mixed lubrication is hydrodynamic lubrication that is why we are using the viscosity values for that. Take an example of the roller bearing, generally they work in a elastro hydrodynamic lubrication, but again the elastro hydrodynamic lubrication major part is a hydrodynamic lubrication, so viscosity matters in this case. So, uh, depend on the kind of the load arrangement viscosity need to be selected properly. If the low load arrangement or the applied load is uh, lesser then we can use a low viscosity. If our applied load is very high and we know that um, there is a more chance of liquid is squeezing out then we require a thick oil we require a high viscosity oil or some additional polymers which are really making apparent viscosity very high. I am using the word apparent viscosity not necessarily every time viscosity need to be defined. Many times um, solid molecular layers are formed on the surface which are very difficult to squeeze out, but in that case we need to use a word apparent viscos viscosity because uh, uh, liquid is there and that is making molecular layer on the surface and uh, finding um, 
uh, can sustain more loads. So, when we uh, use a word mixed lubrication, it has to be uh, done with some upon this gossetty term. This uh, slide shows some uh, fundamental arrangement, um, uh, how and why viscosity uh, arrangement is uh, mentioned. You can see the moving surface, the stationary surface, gap is some film thickness is equal to h and we are saying because of the viscosity, generally they will remove or they move layer by layer or is more like a laminar flow because of the viscosity. And uh, if we take this kind of assumption, it will be very simple for us to find out what will be the friction force. Friction force is generally in that case will be shear stress into area and we know the shear stress for Newton in fluid can be given as viscosity velocity per unit gap or we say the viscosity into velocity gradient. Viscosity is generally given in a Pascal second and velocity is gra uh, gradient is generally expressed per unit second. So, second and second when we cancel out this will turn out to be Pascal, Pascal into area gives a new term. So, friction force can be measured using this kind of arrangement. However, uh, there is a possibility of some uh, modified arrangement or modified relation for that. You say that this is a for, uh, valid only for Newton and fluid. What is the meaning of Newton and fluid? Where they say that initially the tau p term is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1. Otherwise, if it is a non uh, Newtonian fluid, obviously, if the fluid is a non Newtonian, then we should express uh, uh, tangential stress or uh, shear stress of the liquid in terms of topping that is uh, initial stress which is required to start flow, then the viscosity and then velocity gradient that there is a constant or exponential constant that is uh, n which may be lesser than 1, greater than 1 or equal to 1. For a Newton and fluid it is equal to 1. Now, this slide uh, gives a more elaboration on um, uh, this Newtonian and uh, non-Newtonian uh, fluid behavior. We say that Newtonian fluid can be expressed in uh, terms of uh, viscosity and shear rate relationship. What is the shear rate relationship with viscosity? If that is defined then we can say whether fluid is a non-Newtonian or Newtonian. For Newtonian fluid shear rate and shear stress they are in proportion. As the shear stress increases, shear rate increases or in other ways uh, we say the shear rate uh, increases, the shear stress increases. So, uh, here it will be n is equal to 1, tau p is equal to 0, but if n is not equal to 1, is a lesser or greater than 1. In this case the example is given is when uh, this is a lesser than 1. When the n is lesser than 1, what we call as a instead of Newton and fluid, we call a shear thinning liquid, shear thinning fluid. As the velocity increases, the shear rate um, is causing lesser and lesser shear stress, that is um, known as a shear thinning liquid. Similarly, there is another possibility of shear thickening fluid as uh, velocity or um, velocity gradient increases that uh, surface is uh, getting more and more thicker and take a uh, typical example of a corn starch. When we use a corn powder and use a water and mix uh, this together, corn may be in uh, small size, then uh, corn powder may be in smaller size and it will turn out to be a liquid uh, which can easily flow. But if we start rotating that fluid at a high speed, we can find out the very solid surface from that uh, corn starch. And that is why many times we use uh, this kind of shear, uh, shear thickening uh, liquid in armored clothes. We say the, uh, the, the blood proof uh, jacket. The blood proof jacket is generally um, based on the shear thickening liquid. If there is no velocity, then uh, it can be a uh, liquid. When a uh, bullet comes with very, very high velocity, there will be shear thickening effect and it can act as a solid, it can act as a uh, surface which cannot be easily penetrated. So, that kind of uh, liquids have also utility, but what we are thinking much more about the liquid lubricant where the shear thinning behavior uh, is observed dominantly. Okay. Any example of liquid which are liquid lubricant generally it will be a shear thinning behavior 
take an example of MR fluid also magnetoteological liquid they uh, show also a significant shear thinning effect. They are very effective at a low velocity, but they turn out to be not that much effective at the high velocity. There is another kind of the liquid we call as a Bingham fluid or Bingham liquid that shows that initially the um, uh, some shear stress is required to start the flow of liquid. Take an example of the grease, grease is a Bingham fluid or take an example of a magnetoreological fluid, they are Bingham fluid depends uh, on a current supplied, the current supplied uh, to the um, magnetic uh, the magnetic field supplied to the MR fluid is almost uh, negligible as a 0, then it will act as a Newtonian fluid by and large not in a Newtonian uh, fluid, while uh, if the current is supplied magnetic field is supplied then it will uh, develop uh, some sort of uh, shear strength or we say that in that case the tau p will be having some finite value and then finite value is generally greater than the second term. That is why we say that uh, parent viscosity which can be calculated based on this relation itself parent viscosity of a magnetoreological fluid can be increased by the 100 times by changing this parameter tau p may be initially a low value then a high value it can be in Pascal it can be in kilo Pascal also. So, some uh, uh, results uh, are shown uh, in the, this figure you can say that uh, on x axis there is a shear rate on y axis there is a shear uh, stress that in uh, Pascal this is in uh, per unit second for Newtonian fluid we are able to show uh, results for the same shear rate you can see for a shear thinning liquid shear stress will be lesser. That means, uh, if a magnetoreological liquid which is used is getting shear thin then it will not be able to sustain that much load or it will not be able to generate that much torque. So, if uh, you are trying to use magnetoreological liquid for some uh, special application where the relative velocity is high then arrangement need to be made in such a manner a shear thinning behavior is not very dominating behavior. In the same arrangement it is shown that for the same uh, um, shear rate maximum uh, shear resistance comes from the shear thickening liquid we are saying here the n here is, is only 1.05, but you can see the significant change because the shear rate is very high. Significant change just by, by changing uh, by 5 percent. While in this case uh, uh, shear thinning effect also is a significant by just changing the 10 percent uh, value of the n. So, they are very sensitive and uh, we need to really design liquid accordingly. Many times so we add liquid lubricants to the liquid even though uh, liquid in original condition remain as a Newtonian liquid, but when we add some additives then there is a possibility it can gain shear thinning or shear thickening behavior and that need to be noted. The, we have discussed in a previous slide about the viscosity and uh, shear rate relation. Now, in this slide we are going to discuss about viscosity and the temperature relationship. This is more important from um, uh, thinking uh, what uh, Towers did. Towers expressed that the friction force reduces with increase in the temperature. So, there is always some relation between viscosity and temperature by and large um, as the temperature increases viscosity will decrease. Reason generally is given the molecules and they remain in a closeness uh, initially as the temperature increases they get a more um, energy and then they try to get separated from each other and that is why the viscosity goes down or uh, reduces with the increase in the temperature. That is why we are writing that uh, for all the liquid viscosity decreases as the temperature increases, but rate of decrease varies considerably. We are not uh, arguing that there will not be any decrease in viscosity, but we are trying to um, uh, discuss how fast they are reducing. If the uh, liquid is a uh, very stable even though there is a decrease, but that not, not very dominating factor it is a uh, gradually decreasing then that kind of liquid will be good for the application or um, that can give more robust behavior. Often viscosity temperature relation is expressed in terms of viscosity index, it is more like a parameter says that higher the value lower will be the effect of temperature on viscosity. 
and there is a chart shows over here there is a figure uh, shows over here different uh, VI for the different oil take an example of the mineral oil here mineral oil has a 160 VI some number. So, and uh, mineral another mineral oil has a 150 VI other mineral oil has a 100 VI that means, when we talk about the mineral oil it is not a single uh, uh, value or it is not a single uh, substance mineral oil have a number of variations and with a number of classes in mineral oil itself as we can call as a paraffinic uh, oil naphthenic oil and uh, based on uh, different proportion mineral oil will be changed, but they are generally um, um, made from the same source uh, from the uh, petroleum uh, crude oils that is why they are known as a mineral oil. So, mineral oil word is not very good as such. Uh, for all the liquid lubricant, we should be specifying what which mineral oil or at least we should specify what is the viscosity grade of that oil. That is why then this uh, chart we are able to see mineral oil even the 20 V I which has very bad v, uh, viscosity index which as I mentioned more and more viscosity index better and better lubricant from temperature point of view. We are not discussing about any other point of view just in this slide we are exp expressing the, the temperature relationship. There are some oils which are showing uh, viscosity index uh, as high as a 240 you can say silicon oil this kind of the oils are the syn uh, uh, synthetic oils they are manufactured or they are fabricated or they are planned in a lab how one molecule should react with other molecule that is why they are synthetic they are synthesized as per the wish right we can say. Um, uh, what is uh, no, uh, what was earlier Meng uh, concluded from here the change in thermal energy by adding uh, adding or subtracting heat viscosity will be changed and that is why whenever we code viscosity viscosity of the liquid it should always come with the temperature viscosity of the 40 degree centigrade viscosity of the 100 degree centigrade viscosity of the 70 degree centigrade we cannot use that we are using a liquid which has a 100 CST viscosity that will be a wrong interpretation with we will not be knowing whether we are talking about the 20 degree centigrade we are talking about the 40 degree centigrade we are talking about 100 degree centigrade or what is the operating uh, temperature at which we are mentioning of the viscosity. So, ideal way will be that we need do calculation find out what viscosity uh, is required and then uh, compare uh, available viscosities uh, viscosity oils in terms of either 40 degree centigrade or 20 degree centigrade generally when we purchase oil from the market they mention viscosity of oil at some particular temperature it may be 37.8 degree centigrade it can be 40 degree centigrade also. To give more emphasis on viscosity index because it is one of the very important um, uh, parameter generally uh, we say the viscosity index is defined by this relation V i is equal to 100 ratio L minus u divided by L minus h L is the unknown liquid or liquid which we want to find out what is the viscosity index of that h is the viscosity index of the liquid which is very good viscosity index or uh, liquid is a uh, good from uh, temperature stability point of view. L is uh, having a lowest viscosity index uh, lubricant of course, everything is expressed in terms of viscosity that this can be explained in um, simple relation um, by referring this figure you are saying that all the liquids whatever the liquid we are choosing liquid corresponding to L liquid corresponding to U liquid corresponding to H they have same viscosity at the 100 degree centigrade using the word 100 degree centigrade many times is uh, confusing because um, it is generally expressed in uh, um, uh, fraction which say that 98.9 degrees centigrade. So, uh, this all three liquids have a same viscosity at a 98.9 uh, centigrade uh, temperature, but they have a different viscosity at the lower degree temperature maybe here it is written 38, but again that is not right it is a fraction uh, is 37.8 degree centigrade. So, here is a u comes somewhere in between we say the L has a lowest viscosity that is why you can see the more slope over here or the viscosity is changing rapidly with increase in temperature. 
here it is shown uh, viscosity index uh, equal to 100 for h and uh, almost a flat line which is also just a hypothetical concept we know even um, for uh, viscosity equal to uh, viscosity index equal to 300 this line will never turn out to be horizontal there will be always some slope. Just to explain uh, with this concept of the viscosity index we are using the good viscosity h has a viscosity index equal to 100 and that is a flat line or uh, this relation is valid for the viscosity index up to 100 that is started initially, but now we have uh, got a number of lubricant which have a very high viscosity index compared to 100. And uh, this L and H is generally referred with uh, two uh, oils, one is a bad oil, one is a other one is a good oil, Pennsylvania crude oil and the Gulf Coast oil, they are generally referred, but every company has its own norms to define when they market, they have a different uh, nomenclature. And uh, there is a point comes how to get this high V i uh, lubricants. So, a high VI lubricant can be uh, achieved or the we can uh, find using uh, some uh, filtration process or refining process by removing the aromatic uh, component of uh, from the mineral oils. If we remove uh, aromatic component from the mineral oil, we will be uh, uh, getting high VI lubricant. Aromatic are generally uh, more temperature sensitive that is why we want to if we remove those um, uh, additives then it will uh, give very good V i or the mineral oil. Another thing is that uh, sometime we use a blending of the oils, one is having a low viscosity oil, other is a high viscosity oil, uh, the low temperature um, low, low viscosity is dominating at the high temperature more viscosity oil will turn out to be thinner and then uh, it will overall give uh, more temperature stability or uh, resistance. Uh, compared to um, just a uh, low uh, viscosity oil. And uh, finally, comes with the polymer additives, we say that um, this kind of uh, arrangement is used to find out the multigrade oil. Multigrade oil uh, will be discussed in a uh, uh, few slide, after this slide we say that um, if we use the polymer additives which are um, initially coiled up which are not active which remain inactive at the low temperature then it will there uh, these additives are not going to increase uh, viscosity of the lubricant but as the temperature increases uh, coiled structure turn out to be uncoiled structure and uh, slowly slowly they turn out to be straight um, uh, lines or which is that uh, they straighten up themselves what will happen in the situation um, surface area will increase as the surface area is increasing it is going to, going to show more and more resistance towards the flow and more and more resistance towards the flow that means more and more viscosity of the liquid that is why uh, one and the mineral oil are losing viscosity other and polymers are adding viscosity that is why we get more and more stability to all of the, those liquids. Then uh, when we try to express this uh, mathematically viscosity and temperature, two popular relations are available while well, proven uh, relation what we call the Vogel's relation, Vogel's equation. You can say here the dynamic viscosity is uh, given as uh, eta, eta is expressed the, um, uh, is in a Pascal second or milli Pascal second, there is a constant k and is exponential relation, there is another constant b and uh, constant uh, t. So, either constant t or theta in this case we can express uh, one uh, relation in terms of a uh, temperature. So, we can say if I assume that t is a temperature then theta is um, um, theta is um, constant. So, theta is a constant beta is uh, b is constant k is constant there are three constants available in this lit and this relation and this is a uh, kinematic viscosity relation is a, is a dynamic viscosity relation. While uh, coming to the um, second relation what we call as a Walther's relation, but before that there is a table shown that if you require to evaluate three constants k, b and theta use this kind of table. Viscosity at the 40 degrees centigrade is defined, viscosity at 100 degrees centigrade is defined, viscosity at the 130 degrees is defined. So, we, we have a three viscosity at three different temperatures 
we substitute we will be able to get k, we will be able to get b, we will be able to get the theta. Once we know all these three parameters, then viscosity between 40 to 130 degrees centigrade for any temperature can be defined by this relation. As I mentioned, the other relation is the Walther's relation, which is more popular relation because of the kind of viscosity and, uh, and generally viscosity is measured uh, in a um, Sandy stroke and uh, given in a Sandy stroke. Of course, kinematic viscosity uh, can be converted in dynamic viscosity by using uh, density term. To uh, when the viscosity uh, Walther's equation is used, we can directly use this kind of uh, parameters. We say that in the uh, when we want to find out uh, what will be the viscosity at some temperature, then we can find out constant this constant and the other constant C here. I can say constant A, constant B also. Here you can find that the capital T that means it has been uh, expressed in the Kelvin. So, whatever the temperature need to be added with the 273. In this case, uh, if I want to define the viscosity at 40 degree centigrade, uh, T will be 273 plus 40 degree centigrade and uh, this is Sandy Stroke viscosity can be directly substituted. So, uh, Sandy Stroke plus 0.6, sometime uh, relation 0 0.7 is also used constant A and constant B. So, that means, I required uh, in this case only two temperatures and by and large in a literature we find only two temperature quoted by the companies. By and large it is uh, uh, 40 degree centigrade and uh, 100 degree centigrade or we say the 100 Fahrenheit and 212 Fahrenheit. If we use uh, that kind of relation we can uh, find out what is a uh, uh, oral uh, gain from this relation. Say this is a relation we are using in this case I am assuming constant A and constant B and for the different oils I am trying to find out what is the value of A and B. You can see A where can be determined because viscosity at the 40 degree centigrade is defined, viscosity at 100 degree centigrade is defined, we substitute here we can evaluate A and B constant. A constant uh, for the 10 W oil is turning out to be 9.59 while B is 3.77. For a 20 W this is a 8.99 and B is a 3.5. We go ahead and find out all the parameters. Then what we can uh, get the result wherever the B value is high that will be having more temperature sensitivity that is clear. If the value of B is high temperature is given over here overall reduction in viscosity will be substantial lesser the value of the B the better the results. So, this is the importance of the wall this relation we can find out the B and we can say oh, this this uh, liquid is not again showing very good results we should choose a different uh, liquid which has a lesser value of the B. This can be also related with the um, V i index which uh, is generally expressed in this term you can say as a B value is lower viscosity is index is high you can see the 2.55 viscosity index 194. 2.71 slightly more than uh, this value viscosity index is reduced than a uh, higher value this is reduced. However, uh, the one value it is says the 140 and uh, B value is 0 0.10 this clearly indicate that whatever the data quoted are wrong. I can compare any of these two data I can let us take example of uh, viscosity index 102 where the viscosity of 40 degree centigrade is defined as a 140 and um, viscosity of the 5 W turn T is defined 138 not very much variation that is in tolerance range. However, variation comes over here 100 degree centigrade the with the viscosity of this SA 40 is turning out to be 14.7 high velocity uh, viscosity while uh, for 5 W 20 it is turning out to be 6.92 there is a substantial decrease this viscosity is lesser than half of this viscosity. So, that is the wrong data you say that this viscosity index is need to be higher compared to this viscosity index. So, when we do this kind of a calculation we can figure out yeah something is wrong over here B is 5.10 substantially high and this is just 3.4 and still we are saying that this has a viscosity index of 140 that means some sort of mis misprint is coming or some uh, mistake has been made when the data were quoted. So, this is uh, what uh, utility of the Walther's relation we will continue uh, with uh, viscosity discussion in our next lecture. Um, thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.